All right, welcome back from that feature. Micro savings can also be an effective way to reach financial goals by setting specific savings uh, goals and regularly saving small amounts towards these goals. Individuals can achieve their financial objectives, whether it is saving for a vacation, a down payment on a home, or an emergency fund. Micro savings can help to make these goals more achievable. In addition to the benefits, I will look at uh, micro insurance and of course somehow um, all of that can buffer in this uh, inflationary times. My guest, Seth Osana, is the CEO of Badimi.co. He is a visionary leader with over 12 years of private sector consultancy experience. A graduate of Igbenadian University, he is a member of the National Institute of Management. Seth's entrepreneurial ventures span finance technology, financial inclusion and social enterprise driving impactful change. Uh, leading Padimi.co, he pioneers innovative fintech solutions, democratizing financial access in Nigeria. With deep industry knowledge and a commitment to excellence, Seth empowers individuals and businesses shaping the future of finance. Many thanks for joining me, Seth Ozan. Thank, thank you, JJ. All right, uh, in our pre-chat, before we just came on board, we are talking about um, micro-savings, micro-insurance, and um, how inflation is actually uh, hitting hard at people. So just how can micro-insurance really buffer all of these um, shocks? Okay, so the word micro, like everyone knows, means small, mm. bits and pieces. Um, as the inflation is rising now, you know, there's talk about hyperinflation in Nigeria, yeah. and its realities are hitting very hard. There is a financial scarcity, the scarcity of funds, right? The prices of things are skyrocketing. Um, the purchasing power is limited. Yeah. Now, um, it's, I believe that palliatives are one way to help buffer things like that. Yeah. But there's more to it. The individuals, are, individuals themselves have to also prepare shock absorbers for this. And I think micro savings and micro insurance platforms yeah. are the things, are the ways to go. Yeah. So I think tiny habits which foster um financial inclusion right mm. financial prosperity um are the things that need to be pushed around for people mm. now to understand so even though it's hard people need more information about a lot of things yeah right most especially budgetary uh, management those kinds of things to help mm. them ride the inflation mm. so that's where things like padimi that's where we people like us and other mm. you know um fintechs Mm. in that space come to play. I believe that um, we're integral mm. because we're able to get into the nitty-gritty places where the bigger institutions mm. are, not able to, are not able to get. So mm. we're able to hit bottom of the pyramid mm. almost immediately. Mm. Um, basically, we're breaking down barriers mm. in terms of access to what I call social security. So things like healthcare, mm. things like insurance. Your average market woman will not go to mm. an icon insurance or AXA insurance for anything. To get policy. She, yeah. she doesn't believe that they, they have something to offer her. Mm. But I believe that with readjustments and enlightenment from people mm. like us, they can see the benefits. So I can give you an example. Some small products, like some of the products we offer. Um, the woman who is selling tomato, for mm. instance. We have a micro um, insurance policy, which is powered by the bigger insurance companies. Mm. And basically, it, it gives her a protection against illness, health, loss of business, mm. right? That woman on a normal day would not walk up to them and say, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, because she doesn't understand it. Mm -hmm. But basically, because we're able to break down those barriers, we're able yeah. to in include those kinds of people. Yeah. Basically, speak their language, give them the products as well, because those products are already existing. But okay. because of the way it is tailored and packaged, mm. they can now accept it. They really access it. Yeah. But, but, but let me, let me just um, butt in here, because uh, as it is right now, I'm, I'm still thinking about how uh, you, uh, they, uh, the small scale people, people down the, the pyramid, will be able to understand and appreciate all of um, these uh, products that you have talked about. For instance, uh, I'm looking at um, the, the average um, SME or uh, small business owner who is practically uh, struggling to even um, pay, his, um, pay the bills and even pay the little uh, employees that he has in his chain. And uh, I'm talking to him about um, putting up small amounts daily or putting out small little premiums so he can actually get some sort of coverage in case uh, issues happen in the future. But most people tell you that they barely have enough to even take care of their bottom line, right? And not to talk of keeping away some amount for savings or even for insurance. Okay, so um, I think so. I, I, I think it's also a misconception as well, yeah. because disposable income is disposable. 
Okay. In the sense that um, people spend on things they like. Okay. Right? Not uh, things they feel are necess necessities. Mm. But now, because of the way things like insurance or health insurance is pushed in, people don't see it as a necessity. True. So let me give you an example. Um, an out of payment. Out of pocket. Out of pocket payment, yeah, mm. for healthcare. Say you have malaria now. Mm. By the time you run the test, pick consultancy fee, get a card, you're doing an excess of 15,000 in that one sitting, mm. right? You haven't yet talked about the drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to do me and Baker and the rest, mm. oh, they already, you know, it's already 30, 40,000 for antibiotics and things like that. Mm. Now, in that instance, that person is probably going to cough out maybe 40 or 50,000 uh, out of a push because mm. he's sick and he's being choked. Mm. Whereas, if I had offered that same person a 4,000 a month mm. healthcare plan that would do the same thing, and cushion the effects, mm. they will tell me, oh, I don't fall sick every day. Mm. Whereas 4,000 last month mm. have saved you 50,000 today. Mm. So I believe that there is, the funds are available for these things, mm. but it they has to be pushed, yes, as a necessity. Okay. So let me explain why I say that. Um, a simple health plan, right? NHIS is about 22,000 per month, okay. right? Um, 22,000 per month is, someone's that businessman who is a small SME owner mm. will probably eat shawarma three four times a, a month well, <laughs> maybe not okay <laughs> maybe not shawarma but he, okay. there are expenditures where he would spend three thousand four thousand mm. a month without batting an eye it could, it, it could be food it could be something mm. his favorite drink or whatnot but the people still uh, spend on frivolities in this particular time yes, of uh, post subsidy so, 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 no matter how hard, <laughs> how hard it is we still find it we still find time to drink and eat no matter how well, hard true. it is yeah. so i think that um it's it's a matter of just shifting the ball a little bit that's the way yeah. i see it okay um things that we consider necessities mm. we tend to put our finances or yes. we put money to it first mm. so if these things are seen as necessities and the benefits which they accrued are seen as a necessity as well true then people mm. would be eagerly ready to invest in them so for instance if i told someone that just because you paid me three thousand today right i would offer you one hundred and fifty thousand naira upfront in insurance cover yeah for that person you would have to weigh the difference how often am i going to be in an accident but for mm. someone who's in an accident where he has to pay one hundred and fifty thousand naira, mm. in hindsight mm. that three thousand naira would have been a Better. godsend mm. so i think the way we push these messages the way the brands push the messages okay also plays a fundamental role all right i still want us to talk about um micro savings for a base because um you cannot overemphasize the place of um uh, putting small money at the end of the day when uh, incomes uh, income comes in or that's when it do, does come because some people may say that they don't even get regular income mm -hmm. so that they how? should uh, get normally or monthly. So how do we ensure um, micro savings? How do we push people to uh, put out something? Because before now, I remember back in the day, we used to have uh, this popular saying, a large or shomolu, where people just come daily, they come to your shop and uh, you will just uh, save as little as 100, 500 naira. And um, faithfully, uh, people uh, people have savings and uh, they don't really feel it per se. Yeah, so, so I think savings is a culture. Mm. That's how we like to call it. It is something that's either taught or programmed into people. Mm. Um, so like you said, a large or is day old. It's not a new thing. Mm. Um, I think there are, there are a couple of companies, aside from my company, who, who are digitizing the systems. Mm. I believe that savings is key because it acts as a buffer. Mm. And I believe people should actually intentionally save. Why do people have, uh, I don't know, why do people feel it's hard to really save? So, so I, think, I think where the challenges come is in the medium okay. of having to save. So for people who are... Um, who, ha who I call cash transit. There's mm. money moving in and out. Yes. Yeah? It's easy to just remove a piece mm. and close your eyes. Yes. For people who receive money on At a, time, on a time, timely okay. period, yes. right, you have to structure a plan for it. Mm. It has to be intentional because True. in that time span, a lot has built up. Oh, mm. there's food, oh, there's rent, oh, mm. there's fees. So having to take out a chunk to say you want to save without you feeling the pinch, takes an intentional effort okay. and i believe that it should be done because those things help mm. so talking about inflation now if people had built up savings right mm. you'd be able to invest that savings you'd be able to use that savings to do some other thing it mm. could come in for a short run period where there's mm. a crunch 
So okay. I believe that it's important. Because I'm it. looking at it maybe from my elementary economics that I did in school. Because what I know right now is that um, the interest uh, peg that savings uh, in the country is practically very small. And if you measure it to uh, inflation, which is about over 30%, you just wonder if it's actually really worth it over time. So um, also there again, then again, so the, it, the scale isn't balanced, mm. right? What the institutions offer for savings, I think most banks are still at 27, 28% right now. Mm. You have a 31% inflation rate. Um, if you wanted to do the unit economics on that, if the inflation rate can wipe out mm. that savings, but I believe that depending on the kind of instruments you save, mm. yeah, there is a buffer. So people who save in government instruments, you know, mm. the government bonds. So is it just about savings or saving or investing per se? So it's a savings towards investments. That's okay. the best. Savings, just saving keeps mm. the money fallow. Mm. It doesn't generate interest. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't add any value. It's just kept somewhere. Right. But if it's the type of savings that's put in a platform that generates some type of interest that yes. appreciates over time, it might be small increments, but those mm. appreciations go a long way. Mm. So I believe that it depends on your savings. Just has to keep your money in the bank and waiting for the bank interest. If you keep a thousand naira in the bank mm. for over over a year, mm. yeah, you're not going to get more than two hundred and twenty naira. True. Yeah, twenty two percent over mm. the year. Mm. But if you keep your small savings, your one thousand naira in, say one of those small fintech apps where mm. you have an appreciation cost of maybe 0.01 percent mm. on a daily yeah. right it amounts to something mm. and then again it forms a type of second security yeah right depending on the company though yeah. if it forms a type of second security so like for platforms like mine whereby we encourage you to save because not just saving will help you build a credit profile okay that credit profile means that you can access other forms of institutional finance okay whether from you know fintechs or from the banks themselves mm. so people who have small businesses i believe that savings is a tool to actually help you grow okay let's talk about um fintechs now and some of the products and services they offer in the wake of um all of um this pressures that we have on the economy you know from the reports i read sometime last month uh Nigerians are just surging towards um, loan up because uh, to try to meet the gap between uh, when salaries come and um, the immediate term expenses and needs. And uh, oftentimes we have realized that uh, there is this backlog of unrepaid loans and um, some people even get into this uh, facilities without even the intention of paying back just because they just want to be able to satisfy the now and um, you know just get this money but so is it really um a bane right now the loan apps that we have because sometimes people even say that uh, they are like sharks because uh, if you look at uh, what they charge as interest is actually much higher than what the banks are charging yes so you you have a valid point there um well thank god for the regulatory bodies who have mm. stepped in um same thing applies information is power mm. right um i would not dispute that you have unscrupulous people who tend to use yes. but now the loan apps the, you know the fintechs have also smartened and wisened up you know they have stricter policies on entry credit checks to see mm. whether you've been banned elsewhere mm. and things like that. yes it's a good stop gap but it's also it, so it's a double-edged sword, okay. sword that's the way i see it so for people who genuinely need mm. access to quick finance right yeah. to solve a problem Mm -hmm. Right for genuine business, yeah. it's a plus okay. because it will help you as a stopgap. Right, going to a regular bank and trying to apply your processes are a little stringent. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the fintechs, your bottom line entry is a lot lower, so you can download an app, mm. put in your BVN, and you know the thing is you get access to their basic minimum. You know, but for more institutionalized ones where they do a background check where you can access mm. higher amounts so people like family and the others you know carbon and okay, all that's not stop let's to not, mention yeah, the, uh, those, i'm saying those kinds of people you mm. know they do it they do, they do different they do differently so okay. um very true there are sharks among them mm -hmm. right the cbn is trying to cop them but in the same vein they are very good ones in that mix so would you say they actually have uh, s uh solved the issue of uh uh Stopping the gaps, like you have said, uh, in the wake of all of these um, issues of inflation, would you really say that uh, they are also buffers? Yes, I agree. They are buffer. Mm. Yeah, because they provide a positive service. 
Okay. Right? For those who are genuine about their business, for those who have clean records, for those who have good repayment, um, good repayment practices, you have access to almost instant cash. Mm. You want to take a bank facility, mm. you're going to have to go through rigorous steps. Whereas if you're on these apps and you've gone through the process of diligently saving, building a credit profile with them, mm. in the space of 10, 20 minutes, oh, you have X, Y, Z amount. Mm. Some go as high as 5 million, mm. right? So if you could get 5 million just by sitting on your phone mm. and, you know, being diligent, not just being sitting mm -hmm. on, but being diligent through the process yes. and you build that credit profile mm. and you have instant access to almost 5 million to solve mm. a business challenge, I think that's a plus. Okay. But if on the same side, for those who access those kinds of mm. amounts, they have gone through rigorous processes, they've been diligent, they've paid back, you know, they, they don't default. But the guys who are just, oh, quick fix, I want to take 10k today and, mm. down, you know, delete the app. Those guys are also a problem as well because mm. customer feedback or the feedback the, the companies get make yes. it more stringent for other people who actually need these things to get it because, right. oh, you know, the last person we gave didn't pay back. Mm. He just deleted our apps. The loan chart thing, well, mm. the regulation is actually... All right. Okay, we are completely out of time, but just uh, before we go, one final question. What would your advice be now for a small business uh, who is actually trying to weather the storm in these um, inflationary times? Uh, my advice would be diligent bookkeeping mm. right uh, looking out for opportunities to expand your so where there is hardship there's always opportunities so mm. i believe that if you have diligent bookkeeping mm. you have the right saving mechanisms you keep your financial records clean you should be able to access funds in this mm. period right now because as it's hitting hard mm. the government is also putting out more positions for people to access cash so if you're in right. one of those industries where they have subsidies for mm. manufacturing or XYZ, yeah. then this is a good time to, right. to step in. Thank you so much, um, Seth, for your time and, of course, some of the wonderful um, insights that you have provided on the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, my guest, uh, Seth uh, Osanga, is the CEO of Padimi.co, and we have been looking at inflationary times in Nigeria, how we can buffer all of the stocks through micro savings, microfinance, and all of that. And I'm sure you have gotten one or two insights that can help you and your business. My name is Justin Academia. This is where we draw the curtains on the show for today. Many thanks for being there.